Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the video here today. We are going to conclude here with the second part of uh, this little mini series here where I'm showing you how to create kind of your own uh, loader using this base loader. Now, if you haven't seen part one, I suggest you see it because you may be kind of lost if you have not. So the link will be in the description. And uh, today we're just going to do most of the stuff here on the uh, on the PS3 end. Uh, and I'm going to use the Multiman file manager to kind of explain a few things. Most of you who might be a little bit intermediate or a little bit advanced and savvy with this stuff have probably figured out what I'm about to show you. So um, this is just going to cover some, you know, a little bit more intermediate and advanced stuff and just some common sense things. Maybe some of you guys um, didn't think about doing what I'm about to show you. And uh, yeah, maybe some of you guys have already thought about it. And, uh, and maybe you get stuck with a couple of things that we'll be able to uh, cover here. So uh, watch that part one if you haven't, and uh, and then watch this one. It'll just make a lot more sense. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get started. Let's go into the file manager. And of course, those of you who are FTPing can follow along. We're going to go into the PS3 root, and then we are going to go to dev HDD0. We're going to have like three windows open. So now we're going to go into the game folder. And we're going to go to the um, to the generic tool here, the base tool, and uh, that one uh, that folder is called the KMZ M U L T T L uh, stands for KMZ Multi Tool. We're going to go there, and then the USR DIR folder, and then the apps. It's not really much we're going to do here with this one, but I just want to keep it open so you get an idea. Uh, let's go ahead and go into PS3 root again. We're going to do Dev HDD zero again. Once again, go into game. This time we're going to open um, the Black Ops 2 folder, or loader, which is the um, BO2 eBoots folder. That's where the program is located. And I'm assuming that you have the Black Ops 2 loader installed, all right, and the um, KMZ GTA tool installed. If you don't, if you don't even use those, it might be just a good idea to install them so you can use them as kind of like points of reference, which is really what this video is all about. Um, we're just referencing these uh, these two apps so you can see how things are done. Um, and let's go back to PS3 root once again to dev HDD0. Once again to the game folder. And now we're going to open up the GTA tool, which is the KMZ GTA TUL folder. And then once again, USR DIR and then into the apps. All right, so these are primarily the three windows uh, we are going to be using here today. All right, guys, and the reason why I say that this is we're going to cheat a little bit is really because this this video isn't like a full blown like tutorial video. This is more like a, a, a continuation of the last video. This is like a, a 1.2 or 1.5 video, you know, because really we're not going to cover that much. The only thing I'm going to tell you basically is you should have the GTA tool installed as well as the Black Ops 2 loader installed because having these two will go and looking at them will go a long way into you making your own loader. And um, when and I know some of you, again, who are intermediate and more advanced already figure this out. But when you're here in a situation like this with, uh, you know, all these windows open and whatnot, um, it's pretty easy for you to go kind of back and forth. You know, we already talked about the Sprix menus and the install eBoots and stuff. But let's say here in GTA, you come here to the convert blues to bless. Right, and then we go into uh, the uh, um, file placement location folder, okay? And then here we're just telling it, you know, we're telling the program where to place the file that is contained within this folder, all right? And here we have multiple files. You don't need to place just one file. You can have multiple files. So in this case, we have um, the PS3 game folder, which already exists because this is the backup. We're placing, what we're doing is we're placing files into the actual backup of the game, not the updated game folder. So this is where your game exists on your HDD. And so, you know, we're telling it, place this file here and then place this folder here. Now, since the PS3 underscore game folder already exists, what's going to happen is whatever files are in here is, are what, is what's going to get placed. So when we go in here, it's going to place a param SFO. And then we have another folder. If this folder doesn't exist, it will create it, okay? Uh, but in this case, in the backup folder, uh, it, the LICDIR folder already exists. So whatever is in here is going to get placed. And in that case, or in this particular case, it's the, and I, 
I always laugh when I say this, is the lick that file. <laughs> so, hey, that's what it's called. It's lick that. So, um, it's the lick that file that gets placed. So, uh, yeah, that way we don't have to, because technically you can make three or four entries here, and you can make one placement location, file location, uh, file placement location folder for the SFB file. Then you, you can make yet another one um, to place the param SFO. Then you can make another one to place the lick that file. Um, but there's no point. Um, you could just, uh, all these files can just be placed all here at the same time. You just make the appropriate folders, right? That should make sense. And, and you know, again, you should have a little bit more intermediate or advanced understanding of this stuff, uh, you know, to be able to comprehend it a little bit better, but it's not really all that complicated. Same thing with the wallpapers. The wallpapers and the music and the icons are all very simple because they, you know, they go into the actual backup of the game folder and then they go into the PS3, in this case, the PS3 extras, right? Um, and yeah, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy, guys. Here in the Black Ops 2, the SPRX menus that exist for Black Ops 2 are all pretty much non-host, so you can cheat by looking there to see how they're placed. Um, the GSCs uh, menus work a little bit differently. Uh, in, when people run this for the first time in the tutorial, I tell them, make sure you install option number 5, because option number 5 only needs to be installed one time. When you come here, you see the TMP folder, and there you'll see two files, which is the Sprix that loads, that the eBoot loads, and then this is a folder that contains all of the files used by all of the menus, whether they're zombie or multiplayer, doesn't matter. They're all located here, and that gets placed. Once these two get placed, they don't need to get placed again. That's why I tell them just do option number five one time. Of course, for GNC inject injectors to work, a BO2 uh, GSC CFG file needs to be in the TMP folder as well, but you didn't see it there. That's because they're here. So when you come here, let's say somebody who's in a Kex machine picks multiplayer menus 1 through 32. Now here you have two file uh, placement location folders, right? So any file that's in these folders is going to get placed. In this case, the multiplayer eBoot gets placed as well as the self. And it's also going to place the BO2 GSE injector CFG. And this CFG is the script that contains all of the files um, that the uh, the Sprix will load um, that are used by the menus. In this case, these 32 menus. If somebody picks menus 33 to 44, it's going to install the multiplayer eBoot, all right, and um, the TMP. In the TMP uh, folder, this CFG will be installed. It'll overwrite whatever CFG ex exists already there. Um, and in this one, we only have 12 menus that are available. Okay, there we go, only 12. And these are the files that it, it will take out of that folder that I showed you earlier that has all the files used by the menus. So that's how BO2 works. So it's a little bit different. But yeah, if you, and, and remember here, all, it looks like there's a lot of stuff here, but all the Kex stuff, only the Kex people will see, and all the Dex stuff, only Dex people will see. So uh, Dex people will see only six entries, Kex people will only see six entries. So the reason, I know in the last menu we put, we discussed where we put the eBoots and stuff, and here I put the eBoots right there to load. That's because Black Ops 2 is a different kind of bird. Um, you need a unique eBoot to play multiplayers, you need a unique eBoot to play zombies, and then you have the Kex eBoots, and then you have the Dex eBoots, so that's why instead of putting the eBoots, you know, on the front end here, um, it was just a lot easier to put the eBoots to install here when somebody picks something. So anyway, just use these two deals, uh, these two loaders to kind of cheat a little bit and give you an idea of how to make your loader. And one more thing that I need to mention is that um, if you have your game backed up to an external drive, you can uh, change files in it with the with your, the app that you're making. You know, with the uh, with the base loader. Um, like if you want to change the wallpaper and stuff, all you need to do is you need to change the placement location folder uh, directory here, where it says dev underscore hdd zero. Change it to USB underscore. 000 or 001, whatever number is being designated or designated to your external drive. 
and you'll know what that number is when you um, you know when you're here at the main tree and your USB is plugged in it'll say here USB underscore you know zero 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 one whatever the problem with that is that sometimes that number can change if you have multiple things installed on your USB or whatever so just keep that in mind and also if you're gonna make this loader for the masses always use the dev hdd0 directory instead because you don't know who is running stuff off of the um, their external uh, or internal and most of the time they're running it off of the internal later on before the year is over we're going to cover a lot of other stuff uh, where i'm going to do like this grand tutorial thing and it's going to show you how you can edit this eboot of this program as well as the param sfo so you can make your own loader for your own specific games to load in a completely different place so you can make multiple loaders so just practice with this video use the last video and then also use the video that I show you how to update the uh, GTA version 2.3 tool if you watch these three videos combined you'll get an idea a better idea of how to make your own loader and then later on um, we'll show you how to you know unpack and repack the package files how to edit the eboots the power MSFOs and all of that so that way you can make your own loader for your own specific game. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Sorry this was so long. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. And I promise we're going to see you really soon again. Thanks for watching.